Welcome back to the channel. So for this one, we're going to be building the Tamiya BF109 G6, which is a, a recent uh, release, sort of 2017. Um, so first off, uh, one of the not so great points is that instead of tooling um, an aircraft that's designed for the one in the box, we've got to fill some panel lines to make uh, any of the options uh, that are in there listed and really for most G6s. So all these panels and access panels uh, refer to different variants of the G BF109, the Gustav, and different variants of the, the 6, and it obviously goes to the 10, the 14, it goes back to the 2, and um, they've sort of future-proofed themselves in this model with all of them. Um, so first off, you've got to fill them, which is a little bit annoying. Um, Edward just... Re, you know, just give you a different fuselage each time. I don't know why Tamiya couldn't have done that. And we haven't had any future releases, so well, presumably there's some on the way. Anyway, that's a little downside. Never like to see that in a, in a model. Um, but it's not the end of the world. You know, we just fill some panels. That's it, done. You don't have to. You probably wouldn't notice it unless you know what you're looking for. Uh, what you do get is typical Tamiya fit. Uh, in the way that the kit is broken down and the way that it goes together. So we've got wingtips separately going on there, fit perfectly. Uh, and we've got uh, ailerons, which just slot in. And then we've got flaps. And then we've got dropped flaps, I believe. I've probably got a, a different technical name. But there's, there's sort of three sections in the wing that can move uh, on the trailing edge. Uh, and we've got the uh, cockpit here going in, which is a, a tub that slots in from the bottom. Uh, so the side walls are built up on the sides of insides of the fuselage and then this slots up in underneath it so you can get the fuselage together uh, without having to worry about putting the cockpit in. We do get some uh, masks, although you've got to cut them yourselves, but that's simple enough. Not quite as precise as having it machine cut, but it's, it's fine. It's better than not having anything. So just cutting those up with a straight edge. Um, now, this compared... So we, we've got the Spitfire one mark one that they did that i built on the channel um you know could quite possibly be for the way a kit is out of the box for fit not worried about details so much one of the best kits in 148 and then we've got this one that does fall short somewhat of that i mean i bought this kit after building that mark one thinking this is going to be brilliant uh there's no photo etch that's fine you don't need to worry about that so much but there's this gimmicky makeup that you can see here where you've got this option with magnets to have closed cowling or open cowling and, and dropped radiator front at the, at, the, at the front as well. And for me, it just doesn't work. It just makes the whole build more complicated because you've got to really get everything off the sprues, all the parts uh, that you want for both options, um, I suppose you could pick one option, you could argue that. But anyway, um, you've got to get everything off the sprues. You've got to sort of go all the way to the end, paint all the bits up. You can't just paint them as you go because you'd forever be back and forth on ROMO2 and 66 and then back with black. And So I've just gone with all sub-assemblies, got it all into its separate piles of different colours, painted it all and then gone back to the beginning again. Hence why we've masked up the canopy this early because we've got the ROM 66 out so why not just go and get that sprayed. And then we work back now from the set of instructions. So you can see there that's what you get with the engine and uh, you've got the uh, braces, bracing. Uh, I do know what they're called but I've gone, mine's gone blank at the minute. You've got these uh, side braces that join it in. <laughs> and then we've got the cockpit tub there as well, which is uh, just showing a bit of sheen from the paint that I've used, which is Mr. Color ROM66. And uh, started to paint in the details. The belts that I've used are just AML belts, uh, which are photo etch, and you get two on a set, a very good value. So you can see now just offering up the cockpit tub. This isn't how you build, this is how you conventionally build an aircraft, but this one you, you actually slot it up from below, but I just wanted to check the fit and see how it's looking and with the the rear section of the cockpit and the front section of the spine uh, joins in there as well and there you go it just slots up in underneath there so um yeah this isn't one of tamia's greatest that uh, it just feels as though it's a bit gimmicky and for the gimmicks it lacks a bit in build enjoyment and a little bit in detail uh, we've got 
no, nothing other than a decal for the drop filter, which is a bit annoying. Um, I just left a bit. I don't know. It, it didn't. It didn't. Wasn't. It's certainly not like building the Mark One Spitfire, which is a joy from the start to finish. There you can see the ROM sixty six and the ROM 02. So these are the colours that I use for that. We've also got some satin black there, which I use for uh, brush painting, because there's a bit of touching in we've got to do here on the black parts. And uh, my new favourite uh, metal colour for painting is this gun metal, for hand painting, that is. Wouldn't spray it myself. And then rubbers and tyres as well. That's just, I spray the hubs black and then hand paint the tyres. And now to be a little bit different, I thought we'd go ahead and use some of these Citadel washes. So we've got Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade. Uh, don't worry too much about where those names come from, but that's just the names. Now these are a li very, well, a very different, and you said a little bit different, to uh, the enamel and oil-based washes in the fact that once these dry, you do not move, you can't move them. So you want to work fast in small areas, always staying, uh, keeping everything moist, because as soon as it dries, uh, you, you won't get it off very easily anyway. I mean, there are ways you can do it, but generally you're not going to get it off. Certainly nothing like you would with oils and enamels, which you just touch with a bit of thinner and it will move it again, liven it up. So you don't really want to go in chucking it all on as a, as a big wash. Um, just kind of do it in small areas with a damp uh, cotton bud I've got there. And you can also use friction as well, which actually is actually quite good when it starts to dry off. You can get rid of it with your finger as well, just by rubbing a little bit. And uh, if this is doing what I wanted it to do, uh, it's just to darken it a little bit, darken some areas, give a bit of shade in there. You'll often hear uh, mini painters, uh, recess shading, and also uh, it's, it's really just panel line washing. It's that sort of thing. That's what these are designed for. Uh, but they're designed for painting miniatures as in figures like warhammer stuff so it's a bit of a different process so just something to bear in mind don't use these like you would the ammo and an ak kind of washes uh, but they do have a place uh, for speed for certain and uh, just for going in like you want to do here really to change it up a little bit i'm reasonably pleased with the results uh, no nor works really well for anything dark it does have a good effect we're just darkening up a few of the recesses here in the actual cockpit tub as well. And that really gets us to where we want to be. And this means now we can move forward with actually getting everything together now. So building up the fuselage halves and that sort of thing. So that's what we'd be doing here when we're happy with how everything's looking. First off, we're going to put some glue down the spine here. And uh, quite helpfully in the Tamiya instructions, it does tell you that this is meant to be a panel line that stays. Now, actually, I realised afterwards that there is a little bit of engineering gone on here, which allows that panel line to show when you join the fuselage. Not if you do it heavy handedly like I have and plastered loads of glue in there and squeezed it together to get a ridge of plastic. Um, if you're very sparing with the glue back down that spine, you'll actually have a very nice panel line running along down there, which everyone knows about. We, we all know about the 109 that it, uh, these, all these, uh, ver uh, <laughs> what would they be, horizontal or vertical, depends how you're looking at it, um, panels going uh, down the fuselage sides. They're just panels that bolt on at the top and the bottom from both sides, and that's how the structure's made up, so that's why you get a panel line running along the top and along the bottom and that, that doesn't want to be filled that wants to be left generally my best favorite way of getting that is to get a, a seamless join all the way back there and then rescribe it because if you do it any other way it tends to not look very good it's my personal view we're just getting the front section joined up there as well we've got a weird little uh, jutting out part from the front of where the uh, instrument panel will be and that is where the engine housing and everything goes on. Once we get up there, we start getting bits on there for the engine and everything that goes with it. So we've got the machine guns that go in there as well. Uh, so just sort of glue those parts on and that starts to build that area up. And it does start to look okay. I mean, the detail's all right. 
but I, you know, I came out of this. I wanted to try this kit, but basically, you came out of this kit thinking if you want to build a BF109 G6 in 148 scale, buy the Edward kit. It's as simple as that. Uh, this is fine, but it's overpriced. You get a lot more for your money in the Edward kit, a lot more detail, uh, equally good fit, and a lot more options. There's loads of stuff left over, there's loads of ways you can go with it. Um, if you want to add an engine, there's aftermarket for that in the Edward kit, and it's a lot more detailed. This is a bit basic out of the box, I've got to be honest. So that's my view. I mean, if you're starting out or you want something really easy and bomb proof, again, I wouldn't really recommend this kit for beginners because it's so involved. You'd be put off for life almost. Uh, you'd have to do so much at the beginning to get to where you want to be to actually start building the kit. I just feel as though it could be in inhibitive. So I would, um, yeah, I wouldn't be building another one of these and I would approach it with caution really. Especially when you could get an equally a, a kit that is of equal measure out of the box is the probably the weekend edition of the Edward G6, which is in the teens. You know, it's between twelve and fifteen pounds. Yeah, that's that's my view. But you do get some very good fit options here on this this the way this uh, tail plane's made up is ex exceptionally good as you would expect from from Tamiya. It all joins on quite nicely and locks in, and with a touch of glue, it gets rid of any gaps. And it's foolproof as well to make sure the horizontal stabilizers are horizontal, not all wonky, which is something I always struggle with. And we're also adding the magnets now. So this is another little uh, gimmicky part, which you can um, interchange the front section of the aircraft by using magnets. Unless you're kind of... <laughs> I, mean, I don't like things that move on a scale model generally, and this doesn't work for me because the panels don't sit tight enough for it to look good. And I think personally, you've just got to pick to go one way or another. And because I painted it all, I decided to have it all opened up. Uh, it's fine from a distance, uh, but if you get up close, if you if someone's done the same thing with the Edward Brass and stuff, I mean, it's going to be miles ahead. So it's just a bit gimmicky. That's what I keep coming back to. And it did kind of reflect on the build as well. But nevertheless, this good old Tamiya fit's going on there again. You can see the wheel wells have been painted up in O2. The, uh, air, the, the intakes there as well, uh, where they're going to go on. And we've got all of them open, so it's all dropped and uh, all the flaps are open. There's, it's quite a complicated way that this section works on the, uh, the Gustavs. Well, from the, the, any of the later aircraft, actually. It, it, it's the way it opens up. It's like two flaps that, that kind of open up at different stages. And they also have a very narrow gap between them, uh, which can be difficult to model correctly. I did get some alignment issues here somewhere, which I trace back to being where I joined the uh, some of the parts earlier on. So uh, once I'd worked that out, I did manage to get it all looking how it should. With just a tiny little gap there at the rear section. And then we've got the flaps that go in between these and the ailerons as well. So it does give a kind of... It makes it look quite detailed, I think, because there's a lot of sort of different angles, and that always looks quite good. So if you can open these up, it is a good option to take. And you've got the the front flaps as well that, that go forward. So they're quite nice as well, and it all gives a very unique kind of look to the, the aircraft when you do that. So the wing section is very nice, apart from having to fill uh, different panels, which is a, a real pain. And it's only a pain in the fact that you open your brand new Tamiya kit and you've all, all of a sudden got to get the filler out and start sanding. And it just feels like a step backwards to me. And I, I didn't, in, didn't like that idea at all. Uh, never do, really, with kits when they try and reuse parts for different variants. Uh, so that rear section of the cockpit's gone on. It didn't go in that well, actually. It, it left a ridge, and I had to sand it flush. Uh, it's maybe a piece of plastic um, sprue would have spread it a little bit just to join up. Wing joint, absolutely flawless, as you would expect. About as good as you're likely to get anywhere. Incredibly good, tight fitness. Slot straight in. So here we go. So now I'll leave you here for for a moment so just so you can see the process of 
the two options. So this is it all opened up. This is how we finish the model, but we also go, I, you know, I interchange it all and you, you'll see how it works. And the problem for me here is that none of these panels, they need to be tighter. It needs to be a tighter fit. I don't really like the gappiness there and I'm pushing it. As soon as I let go, all these gaps appear and you can see it's not how it's meant to be. It's really quite annoying. So this is why I just decided to uh, choose one way or the other, uh, the other and, and that's what I did. So I, I've I've picked with it all open. So we're into the paint bay. Uh, this has already had the ROM76 sprayed on, and I used MRP for that. So that's underneath and up the sides. And we've sprayed the 75 as well, which is all MRP colors. So using the white tack method and just blanking off, I'm getting a nice, it's a hard edge, but it's a soft hard edge, if that makes sense. It's more like a feathered edge rather than a, a very tight sharp edge that tape would give you and we've got on to the mottling so we've done a video on mottling it went up earlier this week um, it's linked below if you want to see that in more depth where I sort of eight minutes I've taken out of this video and put on its own one uh, but I will show you how I do that on this side obviously you know we can't <laughs> don't just show you that and say oh here's the mottling done moving on um, so we will have a look I only managed to capture a little bit because I'm hoping you can understand just how hard this is to film uh, but tiny bit out of focus I do apologize but what we're going on here is we're using the same MRP colors but very heavily thinned um, I was talking with a friend because I was struggling and he, he so, sort of came up with the idea of just using um, like colored water that's the idea the, that's the concept is to put so much thinner in and just a drop of paint that makes it look uh, makes it flow really nicely uh, and you just then build that colour up very slowly so you can go back over the line or back over the model. So that's how we went and got those little um, splotches that go up along there and then this has got a snake scheme uh, so I really quite like that and I wanted to um, show that off so going back in with the 74 here we're doing sort of snake model now which is something that a German aircraft have in different theatres. This is an Italian theatre uh, it's a German aircraft, but it's, it's in Italy and uh, with JG-77. So just showing you that, that is what I sort of went on and did. And that's just using very low pressure and very thinned paint. Practice, practice, practice on another model and then move it on to your actual model. Then we've got to do the spinner. So there's no uh, no decal for the the spiral on the spinner. So back to basics, we spray it white. We cut a sliver of masking tape and we do our very best to roll that round neatly. You could go two ways on this. If you look at some reference, some of these look absolutely perfect. Others are as rough as you could possibly imagine. It's just gone on with a brush and it's all over the place. So um, take your choice. Jump in where you feel comfortable and just hope for the best. And if you have to do any touch-ups, well... You know, you can go ahead and do that afterwards. The idea is obviously to spray almost from behind or at straight onto the uh, the masking tape, not this way. You wouldn't spray at it from this way and sort of build the colour up. And because it's black over white, it's quite easy to do. And while we've got the MRP white out, I've got the fuselage band masked up and we've got the wingtips masked up. 
So just build that up nicely. Then a good bit of unmasking, which everybody likes. One of the best bits. And I was really pleased with that. I often get issues with fuse large bands, but that's pretty straight. About as straight as I could really hope for. And there's the spinner, which I think is yeah, reasonably successful. It's not perfect. But we'll just say this had a rough one. Um, I've got to do just a little bit of touch up around the front there, and I use some of that satin black just to touch that in for the all important area where the uh, the line joins the end of the spinner. So we're using an extra decal sheet here. Simple stuff. Extra decals work best for me over a gloss coat, just using micro set and sole. And then if you really want to get it down, uh, you then go on to a heavier uh, setting solution. But I haven't found that necessary very much. Certainly not on this build. So just go right on with the micro set. That, that lets the adhesive set quite well. And when that's dry, you go on with the micro sole. And that will help just melt the decal into any recessed panels or raised detail. But not a lot of that on this uh, 109 where, these, where the placement is for all of these. And it's a nice simple scheme. Not too much to uh, worry about. Little symbol up the front there, and then some uh, chevrons and the uh, all important crosses. And if you wonder, the ones on the tail get left off. That's just a personal choice for me at the minute on um, any media content, so we won't be seeing any of the ones on the uh, tail. So here we go, you've got it all opened up, and we're ready to go into the weathering. So, sprayed over a matte coat, just use the MRP uh, Super. Matte, I think it is. Super clear matte and super clear gloss. That's the two I've been using. And you'll see now the ammo washes that I'm using. These are all from the ammo. You know, MIG or AK do the same stuff. It's all the same sort of stuff. Enamel washes, you go straight on. And then uh, with a bit of thinners on a damp cloth, uh, you can wipe it away. That's the, what I do here. You can approach it a million different ways. That's what I chose to do on this one. So uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'll leave you with this for a minute. Once that's all built up and we've done a bit of uh, work around the engine as well, we get straight on with some chipping at the wing root. So we're using gunmetal, which is one of my favourite uh, metal colours, as I mentioned earlier. This isn't actual speed, it's just ever so slightly sped up, but not very much. You just see that I'm just going in as delicate as I can be. Uh, the smaller the scratch, the more accurate it looks, the more in scale it looks. Uh, but just, you know, less is more on this front. It's always very easy to go too far. So you just got to <laughs> sort of step back a little bit if you think you're going too much. 
some German aircraft got beaten up quite hard, you know, a lot of wear, a lot of tear, but you don't see it, you know, for as much as you see it, you also see plenty that don't have it, so just just be careful with it when, when you're going in. Try not to overdo it. And we also add some soot stains as well using exhaust soot. This is great stuff from MRP. It goes on really thin. You can build it up. It's about 10 or 15 coats gone over to, to build this up. And it's so subtle. Uh, it's really effective. And it works really well. Now you can see, not to forget the engine covers that would have had it as well. And we just run it up through the wing route there. Nice and subtle, not too much. A little bit on the cover that's dropped down as well, which would also get it that sits right under the exhaust obviously back over the exhaust and down the wing route again all the small bits they want to go on right at the end so we've got some counterweights for the underneath and a few other things and then we just get the rigging done so uh, this is over super glue so we put a dab of super glue on and then we pick up the tip of the rigging join it on it sets with the glue it does sort of react with the glue it's got a it kind of curls as it touches it and then it goes off and then i found the best way when you're doing it this way around is to actually drag it once you touch the glue just pull it a little bit backwards and it seems to set a lot quicker rather than just trying to plonk it on there because obviously it's under tension at that point and then we've got to join up this uh this section of the aerial from the rear as well which joins into the top of the fuselage and I'm just using super glue here, but you generally, you would add a dab of PVA glue. And then when that's gone off, you touch the super glue to the PVA glue. I'm doing it the wrong way around here. And then you glue that section to the bit of super glue on the PVA glue. And the PVA glue acts as a buffer because it can actually distort the line and melt it again because of the reactionary properties that it has but i got away with it here and i you know if you're careful you can get away with it i'm just putting these blobs on just to replicate a few little uh, sections of the aerial which uh join it to the aircraft so there we go that brings the build to a finish so leave you with some photos i'm reasonably pleased with this model in the way that it's been finished and the scheme i'm, I'm very happy with it Overall, I don't think the model was that great. A bit of a letdown, as the title says. Um, certainly coming in from the back of the Mark I Spit, which definitely is a very good model. This isn't bad, but it was put on a pedestal by me, and I didn't really live up to it. So that's my view. Be nice to know your views if you've built it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the video if you like what you see. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Give the video a like, and I'll see you in the next video.